Hi, I'm Tandy Gutierrez. I'm the founder of mattandkitchen.com, and I've been an educator in the fitness and wellness industry for nearly two decades now. And today I've gathered um, members of mattandkitchen.com to come and share their experiences on the site, what it solves for them in the world because the fitness and wellness industry is super noisy. There's a lot of options and everybody's solving something. So I wanted you all to see the diverse group of members that we have on the map all over the country and all over the world. And in their own words, let them tell you exactly what it is that M&K does for them especially in respect to chronic injuries and chronic issues. So in my nearly two decades of teaching, I typically hear from people, oh, my hamstrings have always been really tight. I have this low back issue. I've taken yoga, I take Pilates, I've gone to my chiropractor and nothing fixes it or makes it any better, but I keep trying. So this is a handful of people who have had this experience and as a career this has been my calling card that the chronic injuries and the funky bits that people have in their bodies um, that no one else has seemed to make strides with they come to me and they start to transition it has a lot to do with the way that I teach and has everything to do with the cueing and the method that I use so I wanted you to hear it from others in their own words and in their own experience so to begin with James, if you will share your experience with us and let us know where you are in the world and who you are. Hi, I'm James Watson. I'm 49 years old. I live in Seattle, Washington, and um, I've been doing Matt and Kitchen for about, I think, two and a half years, two and a half years. And uh, I started uh, when a friend of mine told me about the program and uh, I immediately loved it because I'd done that lice before in a class and thought it was really cool. But here was this program I could do uh, anytime I want to during the day and not have to go to a class and do it at home and do it in the afternoon when I get home from my work and uh, before I pick my kids up or when I'm on vacation or anytime. Um, and I uh, have always done a lot of fly fishing um, and when I was in my early 30s and late 20s I did some ballroom dancing um, I had a lot of problems with my rotator cuffs hurting all the time um, I had given up on doing push-ups and I'd given up on lifting weights because I just couldn't seem to get them to stop hurting and um, also I had really really bad problems with stiff neck uh, for about three years while I was doing a lot of ballroom dance I my neck would get so stiff that I was just, it was misery. And uh, I tried going to a chiropractor, uh, massage therapist, uh, physical therapy, acupuncture, and I could never get that to, to stop bothering me either. And uh, it was, you know, miraculously it went away when I stopped ballroom dancing. Um, but occasionally it would come back. And I also uh, injured my left knee. Uh, when I was in my early 20s, and I have some patella tendonitis, and uh, sometimes I've had issues with my knees hurting, and uh, this is something that's really helped me with those problems. Um, I really, really enjoy Matt and Kitchen because I can do it about five, six times a week, sometimes seven, but usually just five or six times a week, uh, and just get it done and move on to the next thing. And uh, you know, it saves a lot of time to, to not have to drive someplace and go to a class. Um, I, uh, when I'm out doing my, my fly fishing, I, I row a boat. Uh, I do a lot of camping, uh, a lot of moving equipment and, and stuff like that. Uh, I used to come home pretty sore all over, and I still come home pretty sore and tired, but it kind of feels like I have a different soreness now. Um, now I know what's sore and how to work on it. And uh, oftentimes, I, things like my knee feel much better when I've been out exercising and doing, uh, uh, you know, wading around the water, rowing the boat and stuff like that because I can, I've, I've actually learned something about how to get, have good posture. So um, it's one of those things where it's, it's really kind of changed my life because I've been able to sustain it for this much time. And... Uh, that's just great. 
Well, you have, you mentioned a bunch of things. And so I feel like we get to this stage and it's like, we have a, like everybody in this video that I'll share and most of the people I met in the kitchen, it's a much more personal experience than people expect it to be. So I'm not talking to you all every day, but you all have your workouts, you know, daily and weekly. And then we have emails on the back end. So your shoulders, I kind of wanted you to just tell a tiny bit more about that because- Oh, I'd love to. Yeah, because I think that was like so huge. Like there's like an overall, you're a very active person, but you paid a ton of money and a ton of time to all these other practitioners and it didn't really change it. And so then you get that and, it, and you're like, yeah, no, it did change it. And I just wanted you to talk a little bit about the process because we, you reached out, you didn't know me, you know, and you emailed and were like, okay, this person recommends you and here's the deal. What do I do? How does this help? And just kind of speak to that process and then what really changed in the shoulders specifically. Well, I came home, uh, I came home from about five days of fishing uh, for steelhead and it means casting a 13 foot rod for about mm, six, seven hours a day, rowing a boat. It's a big boat with big oars. Um, and there's, it's just, it's fun, but it takes work. And I think the last day of the trip, I just, I didn't even want to go out because my shoulders are hurting. And I would also say that, uh, sometimes the shoulders hurting towards the end of a trip because fatigue leads to bad form. Um, and I, I was just exhausted and I sent uh, Tandy an email and said, you know, I think I'm going to have to, I just started Matt and Kitchen. Uh, it was PYM at the time. And I said, I think I'm going to have to stop doing this for a little while because my shoulders are hurting so bad. I think I need to go to physical therapy. And she said, uh, you don't need to go to physical therapy. You just do a few things. And she sent me a few videos and uh, she created a folder for me with workouts for my shoulders. And it was amazing. It was amazing. Um, my, my shoulder, my shoulders are hardly ever bother me. And if they do, I can usually work on it for a very short time and, and sort of get things set back with the proper posture and, um, using the right muscles instead of being up like this all the time. And I really think this is what was wrong with me when I was ballroom dancing. Yeah. Um, I needed to open up my, my frame a little bit and get my shoulders back and, during the exercises, there's a constant reminder to, to keep your shoulders away from your ears and uh, to open up your chest. And it really creates habits so that, you know, when I first started, I'd be reminded and have to change. But now it's like I hardly ever catch myself slipping out of that. But I really enjoy the reminders. That's great. I, yeah, I just, like, that to me is so exciting, too, because everybody, not everybody, there's so many people that think I'm in pain, there's something that's hurting, there's something that's quirky, and they go, okay, I need to stop what I'm doing. And on m &K, I'm always like, no, that's when it becomes really useful and really great, like, if you'll just let it be. This is where, you know, the injuries and the icky and the hard and the, ooh, and I don't know what to do with it, like, that's actually what I'm best at, and when I get not excited because people don't feel well or are injured, but excited to be able to show that wellness happens and transitions can really be made. But it can be hard to have that trust because you've spent years of time and money and income going to other practitioners and you're like, dude, I don't know what else you got because I've tried everything else. You know? It's true. So, <laughs> it's true. so it's, it's um, I just, I think... I, James, there's so many things about your story that I love, and I always feel we've done a few of these, and I feel like everybody could have an entire hour of their own of the transition tasks, but I think that those daily reminders and knowing how to work through things, even when they're empty, or reaching out and going, this is going on, how can we help? Like, yes, ask how, how we can help, because I can help. So thank you so much, and thank you. Thank for you. So next, um, Aaron, if you will share um, where you are in the world and what MNK solves for you and in the realm of like chronic issues that it's really helped with. Hi, everybody. I'm Aaron Keating and I live in Pasadena, California. Um, <clears throat> I'm 56 years old. Tandy and I have met personally um, by by fortune and her 
her being at a conference in Los Angeles about a year and a half ago. Um, I've been with Matt and Kitchen, formerly PYM, uh, about three years ago. Um, I met her through a Stevens College alumni website where she was uh, talking about her program. And I was really looking for something. I was, I was kind of at the end of my rope. I, I hate going to the gym. And um, I am, I'm a former dancer. I still love dancing. Um, I <clears> had <throat> gotten to the point though, I'm a single mom. I have two sons. Um, one is 20, the other is 17. You know, it's hard to get to the gym sometimes and working full time. Uh, I needed something that I could do that fit into my lifestyle that I felt like I was accomplishing something. And I also have bad knees. I stepped into a hole playing sports about 30 years ago and had to have arthroscopy on my left knee. Um, just recently, um, here in the past three months, I've started having problems with my right knee and had to have some treatment on that as well. Um, anyway, the, the program really fit into my life in terms of 30 minutes on the mat. There was nutrition advice. Um, the reset is a huge part of this. Um, healing from, uh, for the gut and helping just feeling better um, and trying to get onto the mat four times a week. It's gentle exercise. Um, there's no need to kill yourself to do this and to be healthy. Um, and I was really tired of killing myself to be healthy. And so um, the knee issues are, are big for me. Um, I'm also carrying some extra weight. I'm still carrying extra weight, but um, I'm working on that and the reset has helped with that tremendously I've also found that um, for years and years I thought hey you know I've got a stomach of steel I can pretty much eat anything you know I just I'll just go with it but you know that's not true I've come to realize that I actually am rather sensitive to a lot of things and I'll get to that a little bit later but the most important thing was the knee issue for me and um, wanting to be able to be as physically able as I possibly can be. I wanted to be able to keep up with my kids, you know, and um, so what I determined, the exercise, absolutely, without question, it's been wonderful to be able to roll out my mat. I have just started a new job where I'm going to be traveling a lot. This is something I can take with me on an iPad or computer and my yoga mat I can always take with me. Even if I don't have that, I can still lay on the floor and use pillows wherever I am. Um, the issue had been for me, like I say, my left knee in particular. Um, so Tandy also does um, specialized one-on-ones. Um, I actually did not do that for about two years. Um, we most recently did that, and um, she has sent me a whole menu of things that I'm able to work on. Um, I find that I have become very friendly with my foam roller, and it has helped tremendously in terms of the tightness in my IT band, in my quads. Um, many of these, much of the pain that I experience is actually from tight muscles trying to compensate for an injury in my knee. Um, by working these things out on a regular basis um, I'm able to really go pain-free um, and I've started doing that with my right knee as well I'm being treated for it with an orthopedist that does not you know this does not mean that you can't work with your doctor at the same time that you're working a program with Tandy and um, he he really has recommended all of the Pilates type exercises that she's already doing so nothing that he said to me was new um, so I now work both. <laughs> I got it. Yes. Yeah, whatever. Okay, I get it. Um, so I'm working both of those things right now. Um, I am uh, hobbling a little bit on my right side, but I think that that's a strength issue and I'm not really too worried about it. Um, so the chronic injury issue is really a matter of realizing, and I've become much more aware of my whole my whole body um, experience. Um, the fact that when you have an injury, you compensate 
with in other ways. Um, your hips become sore, your back becomes sore. Um, the core work has been tremendously helpful. Um, and so that's the reason that I use Matt and Kitchen. And I'm really grateful for being able to do that at home, on the road, uh, wherever I happen to be, and um, also work my nutrition in with that. Erin, I'm, I'm have little notes because I think there's so many good things that you mentioned out of it that one wherever the point of injury is is not typically where the pain is coming from that's right or what's causing the injury so like knees because that's what we've been working on specifically as a, a chronic issue for you is that it typically does come from the IT bands or from the quads or other weak muscles that are, are in spasm trying to compensate to support something because there's a lack of strength that then pulls on your knee. So it's like the poor joints tend to take the brunt of the issues in our bodies. And you know, to refer back to James, the shoulders are the most injured joint in the body because they move in 360 degrees. So there's so many variations of trouble there if they're not being supported in a balanced way in the muscles. And we didn't talk about it, that Matt and Kitchen is really Pilates based, but it's not only Pilates. And that I teach to muscular balance, but that requires mobility and flexibility and strength because if you have too much strength it's going to pull it off and if you have an imbalance in the muscles meaning the front and the back of the quad or the side or the interior of your thigh it, that's mostly where the knee trouble comes from is you don't have inner thighs that are strong enough to support it and then your poor little it bands on the outside of the leg go into spasm trying to do all the work and then it pulls on a kneecap so and i also love what you said too about if you're working with the doctor or with another practitioner, that doesn't mean you can't do what we're doing or that we don't work in tandem with these things. Sometimes you need multiple modalities, but the goal is to have every piece in the arsenal and to have it not blow your budget, your stress levels, or your time. And so like you just kind of hit on all of them. It's like, look, I've got kids and a full-time job and a life and some chronic things and I need to take care of me. But I, there's not, you know, unlimited bandwidth here. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, certainly it has not been a budget buster in any way. And actually, since May, from May through about two weeks ago, I was not employed. Um, but I could afford $32 a month to be able to have a new video with me every three days. Um, I happen to be very flexy. I'm, I'm lucky that way. Um, and I am strong, but um, the, the workouts with the stretches, always my absolute favorites, um, and being able to kind of change things around um, so I don't get bored. I get bored so easily. Oh my gosh. And, you know, and I'm a dancer. So this is really, really important to me that I be able to, to move my joints and to be able to move with some fluidity. Hey, you know, I'll be the first to say there are some things that I don't succeed with and I can't do, but I don't allow myself to get frustrated anymore. At first I did, but now I don't. It's, you know, if I look at you and I, <laughs> there are days when I say, oh, really? <laughs> I can't do that today. But just because I can't do it today doesn't mean I won't be able to do it tomorrow. And even if I can do one time, still working on the wheel, but um, if I can do it one time and be able to flex and stretch and kind of breathe my muscles out, along with a number of other things, um, then I'm, you know, it, that's a win for me. So, and it's, and it's like you say, it's a practice, not a perfect. And um, Lord knows I'm far from that, but um, it, it just really keeps me moving forward. So I'm really grateful for that. Great. Thank you, Erin. Um, I wanted to say another little note about it too, because with joint injuries, especially and injuries in general, we don't realize what a huge role your food plays into things in the pain levels of these joint injuries and issues. And I think as we, Mateo, you'll be next. And we might speak a little bit to that too, because, you know, it, they do trigger imbalances in the body and it does cause inflammation and inflammation usually shows up in the joints 
And so you have so many foods and when people will come to me in the one-on-one -on -one aspect of it, like Aaron had said, that we, I, I, oftentimes I'm throwing out foods and they're like, but I said my knee hurt and I need to work out. I'm like, you said your knee hurt and you want your knee to feel better. So I'm going to give you everything I have in the arsenal and all of my tools to allow you to heal and feel better. And it's not always just about the movement. So um, thank you, Erin, for your share. And next is Mateo. And Mateo gets a special intro because he's my husband and my business partner. <laughs> and before he even gets to say a word, um, I will say oh, that- Oh no. I know, no. That, yeah, I'm gonna call you out as like the worst client ever. Um, but the reason he's being included in all of this is because he genuinely uses Matt and Kitchen. Like that's his part of his workout regimen. And it's not me teaching him. It took a long time to convince him to do it. It wasn't a given that this was a part of his wheelhouse. And as any teacher on the planet will tell you, and any coach and wellness coach will say, like, do not work with your partner. Like, don't. Because it becomes this whole different dynamic of things. And so... Wow, I'm going to tell that story, huh? I know. No, but I think, like... It's so amazing that you have a story to share that really is separate for you that has nothing to do with us. And it's not a, like you're here just because you're a partner. Like, that's not the case. So. No, I'll, no, no, yeah. I'll be quiet now. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I might put my glasses on because I took some notes. And I, I could go on here probably for 20 minutes. So I'll be, I'll try and keep in the, in the five minute frame. So my name is Mateo Gutierrez. Uh, I live in Brooklyn, New York, and I'm 49 years old uh, just recently. Um, and it's true. So I've been around M and K in from Pimp Your Mat from day one. It was uh, an aha moment that Tandy and I had together to start this business, but it was really the recognition that Tandy's uh, at that time, it was the recognition that people really saw them that way, but I didn't personally understand that yet. And to your point, Tandy, it took almost two and a half, I would say two and a half years for me to start to realize that I should start doing these workouts. So let um, me clarify. And I would say really even in the last year and a half of, yeah, Then we started because it cut out a little bit that we are also business oh okay that we he's being gracious pimp your mat was his idea originally to launch it as a subscription-based website and me coaching um and so we launched a business together but you were not a member or a user of the no no nope. uh no i was not um so yeah, so I, I watched and we grew the business together and um, my own personal history related to injury, because that's what we're here to talk about tonight, is I had a pretty serious back injury in my early 30s um, that was chronic, that kept, kept coming back. And there was this nagging little voice in my head saying very logical things like, maybe you should listen to your wife who is producing these incredible workouts that all these people love and are getting very healthy from and not just look at this as a business. Um, and eventually, uh, after enough pain and af after enough repeat chronic pain, um, I really started to do the workouts. But to Aaron's point, I also really started to um, eat the food that Tandy was talking about and to look at the food in this new sort of way um, and then to, through the workouts, look at my body through this uh, sort of new perspective. And it really was amazing. I mean, I'm not saying this because the, the point of telling you that I've been watching the business for this long before I did it was to make the point that I'm not saying this for any other purpose than it really truly did change my life physically. And it allowed me to take control back of um, the pain that I was in, which was very serious. Um, and to have this amazing sort of, uh, weight lifted off my back where I felt like I could bend over, I could pick up things, I could pick up my kids without the worry and the anxiety of the pain that it could potentially create. Um, I also had a shoulder injury, which Tandy, you brought up 
um, is very common. And it was pretty serious so shoulder injury and it was very painful. It's just gone from doing M and K consistently. And I've seen it in all the faces I see here tonight, all the you know hundreds of members that we have around the world and have had around the world who have gone through the same experience. Um, it's very clear that you know your ability to cue people and understand the full alignment of the human body and also the, to connect that to food and wellness um, really will transform a body. And for those of you that are here or listening that are under 40, it will do the same thing for you. But boy, for those of you that are over 40, I cannot even explain how powerful it is because as, I'm 49, as I said. And when you get over 45, you start to really realize, hmm, okay, this machine wears out. That's really interesting. I hadn't, hadn't really figured that one out before. And that, gets, that can be a little scary. And I would like to be around for the, another, you know, God willing, 50 years and be able to be mobile. Um, and for me, M and K is literally my tune up. It, it, it allows me to feel like I can go through my life at my starting point, at my best base point. So that's number one for me. Number two is um, it has given me back confidence to stop everything if I feel something is off, to not push myself when I'm doing cardio or weights or any other type of exercise I like to do. And to, and to really, really, and this is the key for me of MNK, is to be so much more aware of what my limits are, what my capabilities are. I just know my body better, which is an incredible gift. Um, so does that answer everything, Sandy? Yeah. I, I feel like, yeah, I don't want to go on too long. Like I said, I could go on for 20 minutes, no, but the I key thing like for me is... Three little bits I wanted to touch on from it, because one, as your wife, the back injury you're like playing it cool with it like this has been a historical thing in our household and i got my stuff too but like when it would happen and he would throw you would throw your back out it was like running to the chiropractor big time or you couldn't move i remember you setting up your laptop I couldn't move on the couch and kneeling all day and i was like you're gonna work like that like that's gonna be the solution like that we're gonna do this for like a couple weeks and it would be like two weeks like that until you and going to the chiropractor three times a week when it would go out. So it's not like it was a little bit of pain, like the back would go out and the life goes down. And as your partner with young children at the time, they were little when that would happen. It's like, I'm picking up the slack and you've done it a thousand times for me, but that the back issue was not like, oh, it kind of hurt sometimes. Like it was like this change. No, yeah functional life with it so and the only the other piece I wanted to I mean again there's so many things but to jump in with is that you, the shoulder issue and so James I'm going to put a little bit of words in your mouth because we've had a lot of dialogue in email on the back end I feel like I can do that is that especially shoulder injuries and especially in men because you guys overwork and over push in pecs and biceps there's just not an understanding of using the upper back muscles in a constructive way until you've done had a great coach you know and so the shoulder injuries put you guys out of doing things that you really love to do like you're like okay i have to stop fly fishing i gotta stop getting on the mat i gotta stop working out i have to stop lifting and i'm speaking for mateo too and it's like whoa no, like, let's address it. Let's make it better. Let's heal it. Then go back to doing the things that you love and don't get hurt again. Can I add one thing to that? Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, you know, if I was to sort of coin it, what I love about the M&K workouts and the M&K food is that vanity is really, in the best case, just a byproduct. What you really learn with M&K is that this machine is an incredible machine and you can get really in touch with it. And when you do that, you don't only feel better. It's actually a lot of fun. Life becomes more fun. Doing the exercises that you like to do become more fun, whether you're a cyclist or a climber, or you just like to go for a walk with your kid, whatever it is, it becomes more enjoyable. That's great. That's perfect. Well, thank you. Yep. 
Okay, the next share is coming from Christine. And Christine, I'm going to give you a special intro also because <laughs> it also speaks to the cross-reference of what we do here too. Like with Mateo, he's my partner and my husband and my business partner, but he wasn't always a member and not always my client and still gets to use it and have this, you know, personal experience with it. Um, Christine is Mateo's ex-wife and my stepson's mom. And so, you know, I feel like that speaks so loudly to things of being willing to participate and we really are a family, you know? And so I'm super grateful that you're a member and I'm really grateful that you're here to share. Um, and I just, I think that's not that it's important, but important knowing that like we're a connected family and it's like, we're all just trying to find resources and things that help our lives, regardless of who's doing the teaching and where it's coming from. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I am. Um, thank you. I'm Christine. I'm 49 and a half. I live in Austin, Texas, and I am, um, you know, I never used to get injured. And then all those years of just eating like crap, I started getting injured all the time in my 40s, all the freaking time. And a couple of years ago, I, the most dramatic thing is I threw my back out and I, and I had already started MNK then, but I hadn't changed my diet and I didn't really realize like the impact on my mobility and so I threw my back out doing I don't even, like I don't even remember what but I was started walking like in a 90 degree angle with the cane and that's really scary when you're like wow I could am, is this my new life like walking with a cane and I you know I didn't I didn't really do anything for about a week, like I was babying it, which really was the wrong thing. And then I thought, oh, maybe I should try some Pilates again or try some MNK again. And then it was like, oh yeah, this keeps you mobile. And now I do occasionally have some lower back pain here and there, but I have no fear of throwing my back out again or walking with the cane. Um, because I'm just working to keep myself mobile. And so even when I'm having some issues, I'm able to still exercise through that in ways that are taking care of me. Also as a secondary uh, injury from throwing my back out, I uh, tore my hip and Tandy right away gave me, at that point I reached out to Tandy about it and she gave me a folder of hip exercises and I have no issues with my hip anymore. Also um, rotator cuff, I was, when I first started doing MNK, I had some rotator cuff stuff and I couldn't even like lift dishes into the cabinet and that's completely gone. Like that's just a non-issue. Like most of my injuries that I've had and there've been so many are now like just gone. And that's really cool. Like I went a couple years ago thinking like, oh, that just feeling like I was always having to work around my issues and now I, I just have confidence I'm getting stronger again, which is nice. Like now I actually can exercise to be stronger instead of just like trying to heal and keep mobile. And so that's nice. And um, yeah, so it's kept me really mobile and I don't feel good if I go like two days not on the mat, then I'm like, oh, I, I do it between four and six days a week. That's amazing. I think, again, like you hit on these things that are like, yes, like people don't realize it. And I do think, so I'm 39 and I'll be 40 this year, but I danced professionally, fitness and movement for years. And I've had a thyroid removal and autoimmune issues. And it, it pushed a lot of injury issues. And I think it, I know it's had additional wear and tear on my body. So I feel like I have functioned with a body that has expediated some of those kinds of issues. And the thing that Mateo said too, and I know that James feels and that Aaron knows from dancing for, you know, for just as a, in a body that moves a lot, when you don't move, everything feels terrible 
And it is that like, so, yeah, everybody's going, uh-huh, of like the suppleness. And we all know how many days we can spend off the mat before things go really poorly. Like where you're like two days and that's it. And I think I can still stretch to like three and then you, you're in trouble. And right, <laughs> Marisa, that face, I'm coming back to that face, um, is like, it is the tune-up, like Mateo said. It is this suppleness of like, we got to get past the aesthetics of a workout. Like we need to understand the functionality of maintenance in this body because we're only given one and we can hear it a million times, but until some of the aging process and the beautiful wisdom that comes with it kicks in or until there's an injury or sickness that scares you, you don't understand it. And so what tends to happen to people is they get really like they wait until there's an injury and get scared. But for those of you who've been on the mat before some of the scary things happen, there is a moment of like the light bulb going off of like, maybe I should try getting on the mat, you know, because Christine, I have a terror in my hip and that's one of the things I'm really good at. And so when anybody says I've got this feeling or I have a terror of something going on in my hip, you'll go to practitioners who mean well and God bless doctors and practitioners but they only know how to manage symptoms. They don't actually know how to heal it. Their job is to manage pain or to send you to surgery because that's their skill set, not because they're trying to do anything wrong. They don't understand how the mechanism can get better and work or stave off those processes for a long time. So I've been told twice that I need a total hip repair. I don't. I just needed to do my work when I was being really... Uh, not lazy about it, but having two babies and not time to do the work. And they told me that real quick. I found my, you know, 30 minutes a day to not have that happen. Um, and I didn't even know that about your shoulder. So. Oh yeah, that was in 2014, <laughs> but it's like completely gone, totally gone. Like just zero issue. Elbows too. I'm telling you about five years ago, all of my joints started acting crazy and now it's just a non-issue. And did you, did you, cause I'm asking genuinely cause I don't know. Did you notice an improvement and an upswing after you did the reset? Cause I, everybody's resistant to do the reset and figure out their foods, by the way, like everybody. Um, did you notice any of that when you did it or after you did it? You know, it's hard to say because all of these injuries came over about a three year period and the, the reset really helped like digestive issues. Like st a lot of stomach pain is where I noticed the biggest improvement with that. But with, with the injuries, they were so spread out that it's hard to pinpoint. Okay. Just out of curiosity. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, let me ask. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> um, so thank you for sharing. Thanks. Yay. Um, Ryan, you are you are next up. Will you introduce yourself and share a little bit? Sure. So I'm Ryan from Hoboken, New Jersey. Um, I my wife and I actually found MNK. I would say a couple of years ago now, probably almost two years. Um, and really, what it solved for us is uh, the biggest thing initially. I'll say was time issue. Uh, we have a couple of kids and we don't have a lot of time. So that's the issue. Um, we don't have the time to go anywhere uh, or actually do anything. We used to belong to what I would call, I won't name it, but a very high end fitness club in New York. Um, and uh, it was, it was nice, but you know, it took time to get up, get out of the house and go there. And, and just in that excuses arise and it's very easy to not go, but it was nice to go. And once we found M and K um, it was great. It was better you get a much more personalized experience um you get someone that you can email you get someone that will respond <laughs> um and even you know in my case uh specific the chronic pain uh funky bits as you like to say <laughs> um is is my, huh, my lower back uh, i was a baseball player lift a lot of weights would never do anything like this um and then when baseball ended i continued to lift weights hungering for that sort of uh competitive spirit i found marathon running another really great thing for your body and uh i initially injured my back in baseball didn't do much about it went to a physical therapist you know maybe it worked for a week and then went into marathon running it only got worse and i would just kind of like not do it for a little bit and never really fully treat it um 
I really stumbled upon Tandy in a previous role um, on uh, Exercise TV long before um, the M and K, uh, and and this Pilates thing was great. It was it was nice. It was nice for lower back and. I fell off the wagon here and there with doing the Pilates and when we rejoined M and K two years ago, I reached out to Tandy. I got the, the, the folder, I think low back love it was called, yeah. which, I, I, which I love. I still, I still go to it every once in a while when, when I need it. Um, and I do notice, I would say my sort of period is probably three days where, and it could be as simple as like, if I've been on the mat in three days and I'm like literally just making the bed, I feel like, Oh yeah, that's, that's why I get on the mat because like little things like that, I'll engage the core with you, not even thinking about it, making the bed or picking up one of the kids. And it's just little things like that, that help me get through the day that, that will, you know, fall out of, uh, you know, the fit if, if I'm not working on it on the mat. Um, and that's, that's really what, what keeps me going. That's amazing. So I, like we talked a li I mean, we, we've talked about it because I sent you the folder. So on Man Kitchen for any of the subscribers, if you all reach out to me in email, if you become a member and there's an issue, then I have custom folders. So there's protocols for certain injury issues and low back is like the number one because everybody's everybody. I, I dance for years. So there's a low back issue in there that needs love every once in a while and it starts to get a little cranky. Um, but I think it's interesting too that like you played baseball and they send you to physical therapy, but especially I was going to say like for the dudes, the men on the mat, like y'all are not ten, you're not educated to go through the repair process, even as athletes, which again, you know, I always put dancers in the athlete category too, because the amount of work that the body goes through is unbelievable. And we're also taught as athletes to just keep going like, cause there's a game to play. There's something to win. There's a performance. Like nobody can see that. You just keep going. And so it's fine in your teens and twenties and maybe into your early thirties, but nobody in the scenario of a competitive athlete or professional athlete or professional dancer or, you know, dancer that's looking to be professional. Is there ever a conversation about longevity and how to keep the longevity yeah, I mean, I know Marisa's going to, like, jump into that one when it's her turn, because it is. It's like, nobody would have said anything. They're like, we're going to send you to physical therapy, but then years down the road, you're like, hey, I still have a back thing that, like, gets cranky when I make the bed. That's a real lifestyle, life experience, <laughs> like, quality of life thing. So I think that's, like... Yeah, I'll just say... Yeah. I'll uh, so the longevity um, cued something up in my brain. Um, so I, you know, at 35 years old, I didn't really think about it that much. But really, as you know, with the kids now, I'm thinking, you know, what I lost with the kids is also golf. And I do like to play golf now. Um, but I don't get to get out as much anymore. And I'm thinking, you know, someday I will. I will get to get out, but I might be 60, 65 when I can really golf as much as I really want to. And something like this, yeah, I've kept it up now for, you know, five, six years. Um, I would like to keep going with it. And that's like the really long-term goal is to just be able, because there's a lot of torque in a golf swing, a lot of torque. And if your lower back doesn't work, it, it, that would that not make golf. <laughs> yeah, it would, be not, it would be nothing. Yeah, and so, uh, so I so, think- So speak to longevity, that's really important to me. But I think that's such a great thing too, especially for parents of younger children, because I feel like I'm on the other end of it. I was the, we, I was the first of my friends to have kids. And so now they're six and 10 and I'm like, oh, I can do some things again, you know, that it's not the same scenario, but to have your eye on the long-term prize and know if I keep things supple, if I keep things strong, if I keep things, then I can go back to what I love. And so I know Mateo's a big advocate of that too. And I am too, that Matt, you know, getting on the mat doesn't have to be your only thing, but it's the thing that needs to stay in the roster so you can keep doing the other stuff that you love because it'll always put the pieces back together. So I think that's unbelievably huge to make note of and two things too is that all you know good golfers in the pga have a pilates instructor number one it improves rotation like nobody's business and core strength um they just don't tell anybody 
And two is that I've had, you know, clients that were major league baseball players and the huge unimproving their swing and the distance, you know, like their distance on it because of that. And again, the improvement of rotation. So it has all these, I just always say Pilates Everest makes everything else better. Like you don't have to like it because I didn't like it when I started it. Like you may actually really dislike Pilates, <laughs> but it makes everything better. So you know, you can speak to that, even if you don't. I know you curse at me sometimes in the morning. <laughs> no, yeah, it, well, it is 5.30. I'm cursing anybody, it, so don't take it personally. Right. But, uh, yeah, no, it, it goes a long way, and, and, and I do actually enjoy it. I enjoy getting better on the mat, and, and yeah, it's nice the fact that it makes the rest of your life better. That's just, that's just the nice part of it, but uh, you do. You get to enjoy it. Uh, the more and more you do it, um, it does get harder, but it gets better. And that's another good key point too, too, is that every class, because it's a multi-level class, every class there, and, and Aaron said it also, there's sometimes some things you just can't do yet, but I am a firm believer in one, you rise to the level. It's like this kind of a key thing with dancers and athletes, you put them with dancers and athletes that are a little above them and they lift up, you know, in their quality of approach to things and their ability. And it's totally the same on the mat. Plus bodies are not built in beginner, intermediate, advanced. Like you're going to be advanced at some things. You're going to be beginner at other things. And that goes for everybody. People who tell me that they're advanced, I go, oh, sister. You're, go, you're like, oh, no. Mm -mm. Like, because then you're like not in learning mode anymore. And so you want to stay in learning mode on the mat and approach things that you never would have tried before, or at least hear it. Or a lot of times you try stuff and you go, I never thought I was going to be able to do that. I could totally do it. So there, again, I just I'm so appreciate the share. And I love the share about golf in particular. And I didn't realize you played baseball. I think we've talked about it, but I didn't remember that. And that that's a time. Yeah, but it but it, that's the template of your body's muscle memory too. So it's an interesting um because that'll always be your set point of what you go back to physically. And I, I think that's really important. And I think it's really smart that you're already like stashing M and K in your brain so that you can golf later on. <laughs> Yeah, priorities. priorities. Right? I, yeah, I appreciate that. Um, thank you, Ryan. Okay, so Marisa, you are next, and I'll let you introduce yourself. And I, I, I have some hints of where this is going tonight, and I'm just going to let you introduce yourself and and go. So if you'll share. Hello. Can you hear me? <laughs> okay. I am Marisa and I am 37 years old and I spent three decades inside of a ballet studio, um, dancing ballet and then becoming a certified teacher through American Ballet Theater. And um, I am now living in Northern California in Humboldt County. And I am the accountant for the golf course here in town so ryan if you ever want to come play golf <laughs> on the north coast of california i can hook you up so um tandy and i danced together in college and probably about five years ago i was in new york and working on my teacher certification and my entire left hip and back locked up completely while I was walking down the street and uh, my left leg was kind of dragging behind me <laughs> and I contacted Tandy and um, we had worked together with a lot of different injuries and I knew Tandy had had hip injuries and at the time she had not started anything pimp your mat or anything and I came over to their apartment and she went through some exercises with me and scribbled some things down. I think I still have that note um, of all those hip exercises that you gave me. And through the next three years, I went through um, orthopedic doctors and MRIs and um, chiropractors and acupuncture and <laughs> all sorts of things to try to figure out what was actually going on. And um, they finally found a specific injury in T11 and T12 of my back. And so 
once again, the injury is not where the pain was. Um, we were focused on the hips and trying to figure out and strengthen the hips and that helped tremendously, but I still kept having problems. And once we were able to identify that it was actually in my back, and then I went back to Tandy with that information. And uh, that was revolutionary for us because Tandy was able to pinpoint exercises. And I'm not sure how many custom folders she has created <laughs> for me over, <laughs> over the years. I have lost count. Um, <laughs> but having MNK has solved so many things for me. Um, being a dancer and part of the treatment that they diagnosed when everything locked up was bed rest. And as we've all discussed, um, that's the worst thing that we could do to ourselves. And in my case, it was awful. And I could not even walk across the house. Um, it was pretty bad and excruciating pain. Both sciatic nerves were pinched. Um, and getting on the mat regularly, um, even if it was just five minutes and that was all I could tolerate, or taking Tandy's workout and hitting the pause button and working through a position and working through an exercise and allowing myself to take time with it. And even if that meant I only did it once and the time that Tandy did it five times, didn't matter. <laughs> I did it once and I focused on doing it correctly. And that made such a significant difference for me in the way I was able to move in everyday life. And even being a ballet dancer and being trained to the nth degree about body placement and alignment, I, it still hadn't sunk in the way that it has with m &K. and I even, when I drive, when I walk, when I stand, um, I have a standing desk at work. I don't, um, I don't sit hardly at all <laughs> anymore. And whenever, if I'm hurting in the middle of the day, I immediately stop and say, how am I standing? Where is my hip placement? How is my back aligned? And as soon as I re-engage everything and lift up in my core, all the pain goes away. And I can go back to work and do exactly what I need to do and not be distracted by the pain and not be, um, have it looming over me because there are days when the pain is debilitating, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally, and it's hard to, to function. And um, I just hear Tandy's little voice in, in my head throughout the day of, you know, where are your hips? Where, where's your back? Like, are you, are you, you know, are you sticking your ribs out? <laughs> and most of the time, her little cueing that has ingrained itself from m and is, is spot on and it's accurate. And um, so Tandy has solved a lot of things. Um, and as far as the reset goes, I have found so many things that I never thought would impact. Um, and even eating beef, especially, um, I cut that out completely um, a few months ago and that stopped a lot of the pain that I was having in discs and in nerves coming out of my back. And that was probably one of the most significant um, things that I noticed coming out of the reset. So that's my world in a nutshell. <laughs> It's a lot, and it's a big world, and it's a long history of it, too. Yeah. I forget, like, we all get in the room, we start chatting, and I'm like, whoa, it's been a long journey, and that, I think, yeah. okay, so the notes, because on that, you know, the notes that I pulled out of it is, I'm just going to go with one for right now, or two, it's understanding what foods inflame stuff or kick things out is unbelievable. So the one that tends to come up too with people in the last five years is red meat because everybody asks why there's not, you know, there's no beef on the reset when grass fed is so big and that's a whole nother topic. But um, it, it's because it's, it's acidic and it can really kick the biomechanics out of muscle structures and issues. I mean, sugar is huge too, but the other yeah. one that people don't realize when they come with major joint issues and injuries, I'm like, ditch the corn now. And I have a lot of private clients with yeah. arthritis that are like into their seventies and they finally give up popcorn and they're like, 
I don't hurt anymore. I mean, they're like blown away. It's like magic. I'm like, yeah. oh, it's magic. It's just, you know, it's actual science. <laughs> but so like figuring out the food, you know, that it can play a role. It doesn't for everybody, but be careful with that also because I think it does play it for everybody, but it just comes at different stages too. So it's powerful. And that when you're looking to heal, you need to be willing to look in all of the corners, which I feel like is being in the fitness and wellness industry, the best thing it offers. It's not just offering one piece. It's offering how to navigate your lifestyle to, you know, to tweak all the pieces to get to well. Um, and so the other piece that I, I, I wrote a note about for you, Marisa, was the taking the time. This is so huge with an injury. Because, okay, there's a couple of scenarios. If you can find, and you do have a great instructor, a great coach to work with, when you have an injury, they will tell you in a studio and in a gym, and they're right to, that you need private, right? Because you need the time, and you need to navigate your own body in that time, and you really shouldn't be in a group class. And for years, it kept me out of class, or I would go and I'd really mess up my body, because in a group class, you don't get the time to navigate the alignment and work with the injury to make it better. And then if you find time to go take a private, who has, I mean, bless you if you do, most people do not have the resource, yeah, the money to go pay for the right educated teacher. And so, Marisa, I know that you and I have done the same thing, is that we would get injured back in the day, and you'd save up a bunch of money to go take from somebody you trusted that was really smart, and you got to see them, like, twice. Twice is not feel an injury. And so, I, you know, because you and I have some similar stories, too, about it, and just dancing of chronic injuries. It's just overuse, and you're, you're making shapes, and you're not really going to worry about alignment while you're making a shape and performing. And so, you know, Matt and Kitchen, one of my big deals about it was is I wanted it to be accessible. I was working in the top tier in the industry. People had to pay 150 to 250 an hour to be able to see me. Meanwhile, I couldn't afford to go take with any of the teachers that I trusted and wanted to take with. So I think it's really cool that you made note of, I can press pause and I can work through my body and that makes it better because you're being aware and connected and then you move mm -hmm. on. And one beautiful yep. one is worth gold as compared to like running from ten of them. Yep, yep. Yeah, I just got real excited about that because it's... <laughs> Because it's a big deal. You know, it's a it really big deal. And, and people it don't is. realize that. So it's like, you know, to, to, you know, reference Ryan, it's like you'll go to physical therapy. And good physical therapists get to spend 30 minutes with you. I, you know, and in this day and age, it's usually 15 minutes. And they give you a runoff sheet of exercises for you to go repeat at home. In theory, those exercises work. Okay. But what doesn't work is one, you're doing them in completely poor alignment. So it's completely worthless. Like it's totally worthless. It's not going to heal anything. It's not going to solve it. And you've got to, you know, chase your insurance around to try to get it reimbursed, try to get them to pay for any. I mean, it's like insanity. So as Pilates instructors, we end up with the broken injured birds because people are in so much pain and their insurance won't pay for them to go see a PT and the PT no offense because there's good ones there's great ones out there they're not super common they don't get enough time with you and they're not coaching to alignment if you can spend 30 minutes in real excellent queuing that is worth more than all of that time spent combined so yeah i got a little fired up on that one sorry yeah <laughs> Okay. Um, Marisa, is there anything you want to add to that? Um, it's a truly amazing experience. And for someone who is mobile and I uh, spent my life not ever sitting still, um, I can sit still now. I can, um, but I'm also mobile. Um, I can still keep moving and still keep doing things and I'm not stuck, you know, in bed or having somebody carry me across the house. Um, so it's good stuff. And, um, don't hesitate. Just don't be afraid of what Tandy may or may not offer you. Just go for it.
Yeah. <laughs> totally worth it. I think, like, I get little emails and notes, and I think it came up in the other ones. It's like, just listen to her. And that's why, like, the whole bossy pants thing, like, I'm getting a pair of pants this year, just having bossy pants embroidered on the butt and wearing them proudly, because I really do feel like, please just listen. Like, I, I feel like people have been so overwhelmed with um, statistics and science, and not that I, I mean, science is involved here. But there's, right, <laughs> Aaron, you know, but it's not everything. It, it's not. Bodies are individual and beautiful and quirky and weird. And I'm really good with the quirky and the weird, you know, and just allowing slow progress to happen. And so part of me wants, you know, when people come to the mat, I will answer anything. And you all know that. But I also want to be like, just do what I tell you for this amount of time. After that amount of time, you can come ask all the questions you want, and we will work through it. And if it did not help, you know, but the whole better is better thing came along on that kitchen because better is life changing when you've got an injury or, you know, a disorder or disease. I mean, like you said, Marisa, you've had to have people carry you across your house. Like I used to get up from a chair and my hip would slip out of place and would like, collapse, you know, like. Yeah, and, and I've ruptured my entire right hip. So I know what it feels like to not be able to walk in your own body. And it's terrifying yeah. and disempowering. So it's like, you know, mm -hmm. I just want people to come to the mat for four weeks to, to three months and not ask a single question and be willing to do and be guided and then come ask questions. Because most yeah. of the time, I don't have questions. I'm just going to keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you marisa um who would have thank known you. years later you know we're gonna be here together that's great thank you thank you all right mia my dear mm -hmm. i saved you for last so if you would happily share with us where you are a little bit who you are and what mnk solves for you and especially with chronic injury or chronic issues? So I'm Mia. I'm in Berkeley. I'm Mia. I'm in Berkeley, California. And I'm 33 and have been a member with Matt and Kitchen for I think a year and a half. But really an active member for a year. Um, I have for I think six years or so, five or six years, had issues with low back pain. I worked in a lab and wore the full biosafety suit and had in like size 10 shoes that had no cushion and it was fully inflated, pushing me away from the um, biosafety cabinet. So it's like terrible posture. There's absolutely no hope in those. And it really started hurting my lower back. Like I would get low back issues once in a while before that, but then it was chronic. So I finally had to go to a chiropractor and fortunately I found a good chiropractor. And, um, but I worked with him for a while and I didn't like that reliance on seeing a specialist to work on things. And it just made me feel like I was in need. Um, but I saw him twice a week, twice a month, eventually for a long time, like six, maybe a year. And, um, then things were good. I started going back into the gym more and I constantly suffer with boredom. So I don't know like what I'm going to work on or, and I ended up doing the same workout routine all the time. And I would tend to push myself a lot. And I know for sure that a lot of times I wasn't in correct alignment um and then I ended up at a job where I'm constantly sitting at a desk or in the car and I know Tandy's posted a YouTube video about this that you're not injuring yourself in one moment where you realize it it's something that builds up and I really think that's what happened because just all the sitting with a combination of my previous back issue um 
eventually led to all my muscles and tendons probably getting shortened and was on a hike one day and my foot just hurt so badly. I could hardly walk across the house without hurting or feeling the pain. And so, of course, I was thinking this was a foot problem, but why do I have a foot problem? I wear comfy shoes. Well, sometimes comfy shoes. <laughs> and so I finally started seeing a physical therapist. And I was actually really lucky to work with an excellent physical therapist who just made me walk and realize that, look, you're like all out of alignment. This is the bottom of your body. This is the top out of your body. And you're like all over the place. <laughs> Um, so she realized it was actually in my hips and my back that I had to realign things to fix my feet. And so I thought that was amazing information and I'd never really looked at the body in that way. And, um, it was really inspiring to learn more about it. And at this time I was a member of Mountain Kitchen from my, um, aunt who's been a long time member she recommended it for me because i struggle with going to the gym or i'm not even a member anymore of a gym but um i wasn't actively using mat and kitchen because i had this physical therapy work a couple times a week and it was helping but i was getting again reliant on it um and my therapist was also saying, don't do things on your own because I was doing yoga at home alone. And I think that was also tor torquing me. And so she was really specific back to what Tandy was saying that, you know, they want you to be one on one with someone in person. So I emailed Tandy and I was like, if I cancel Matt and Kitchen, can I still keep all my videos? You tried to bring it up, I wouldn't let you. I know, and she said, what? What's wrong? So she asked me to tell her what I'm eating and what I'm, um, like, basically lay out five days in a row of what you're doing and how you're feeling. And I did that. And then I also explained all the issues I've had and the anxiety, actually, I forgot to mention that, the anxiety around feeling like something's out of whack again and I thought I was done with physical therapy and now I'm anxious because I don't really want to get reliant on it again um so there's a that's a big thing actually with me the anxiety around the pain or feeling like something's out again and so I told Tandy all of this and she sent me back like this two-page email probably which was awesome because I sent her the same link and I was I was like, oh my gosh, you're never going to hear it from her again. <laughs> but um, she responded really thoroughly and dropped like three folders into my account and told me exactly what to do um, and told me to check back in in three weeks or four weeks and see how I'm feeling. And I was starting to feel better. Um, I was feeling more empowered that if something were to happen i could probably it, i wasn't at that stage where i could fix it on my own but i knew that tandy was there so i didn't have to go to my physical therapist i could go to tandy and um work with her so that was really empowering and then a year later like i haven't gone to a physical therapist in one year which is amazing and that doesn't mean things don't get out of whack. It's just that when they get out of whack, I don't worry about it. I know that I just have to get on the mat, do a few mat and kitchens in a row, um, and it'll be fine. And so taking the worry out of it actually helps a lot with taking the pain out of it because I'm not like constantly focused on it. So that's huge for me. And Tandy also alluded to a hyper hypermobility, and I told totally have that um so i think your homework tandy of like really stretching it out and actually because of hypermobility when you're not working out that leads to um tightness was a revelation for me i didn't realize that before because i do need to move and i found that i sometimes do mat and kitchen seven times a week i know you're supposed to have that rest day but for me, it's a moving meditation. And so like right now, 
I've been doing it twice a day um, because I'm trying to catch up to the latest video. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I also really like to do it twice a day. And if I don't do my mountain kitchen, I feel like my day is not complete. And it's sometimes I have to just do it first thing in the morning so that I know that no matter what happens in the day, I did my Pilates. So it's a really like soothing thing for me. And um, just reach out to her. I mean, if you are struggling with whether or not to get on that or you have some issue that you need to correct, but you're seeing some specialists, um, keep seeing them if you want, but also reach out to Tandy. I mean, she really helps. And there are plenty of folders, as you see. I think we all have different folders, but I might need to get that low back folder. <laughs> But, um, I have that one. I need, I'm collecting them all. <laughs> yeah, I need this. <laughs> but no, really, even without the low back folder, I have low back issues now and then. I mean, I feel like my SI joints always like here or there. Um, but I know what workouts to do. And even if there's no particular workout I'm doing, I know that just getting on the mat a couple times in a row it's fine or even just my homework youtube videos i'll do when i'm traveling with my mountain kitchens and i can fix things so quickly so yeah. i me again everybody just hit something these really different pieces that speak to the same bigger picture of faith of that there's accessibility with it that you can travel with it i know that in the stages where I'm traveling a ton is often where my body gets the most out of whack because you're seated and crammed into weird spaces and carrying stuff. So, you know, and people who travel a lot are like the most to struggle with trying to stay fit and healthy or find a, a movement regimen that works for them. And it, it's great in small spaces too, but to the notes that I took, one, the empowering piece of it, of not being in fear of what happens with the body is gigantic. And Marisa alluded to it too, of that mental the anxiety of what if it goes out. I know Mateo, you know, we've talked about that too. And I imagine Christine, like when you've had a big injury issue, it's always like the ghost in the back of your head. And there is literally energy expended on it that makes it exhausting. You know, and so then when you, and there's a cost associated with that and time associated with it. It knocks you out of doing things. And then you have to go find the time and the resources to see a practitioner. That mat and kitchen, you know, I spent a lot of time injured, which I know makes me a good teacher. You know, because one, I understand the panic and the anxiety of it, but I also understand the process of working through it. And, and the reality is, is that I can, I said this in another video, but it's true. It can be a very chicken little. I get so mad at people who cannot tell me a linear process <laughs> to a solution or to better. So I'm like, I'll just figure one out. And so <laughs> like, but you know, like Mia, like you said, you're like, I don't want to be reliant on anybody. There's an empowering piece to this that Okay, I'm pulling out the soapbox and then I'll try to keep it quick. But we have a physical body and we all think we know what to do with it. But there isn't a handbook and we have not been taught how to navigate in our bodies in a constructive, in a empathetic, in a kind and loving manner. All of those words have put put in this pocket of bad and it means then you're not strong, then you're not competitive, then you're not efficient. And it's like that's complete baloney. So what I end up teaching people is connection and awareness and alignment. And finally teach you guys like, how are the bones supposed to sit? When the bones sit the right way, then the muscles, ligaments, and tendons can lay in their right patterns. If you don't take care of the fascia on top of the muscles, ligaments, and tendons on top of the bones, then they're going to be grumpy and they're going to be injured and they're going to feel crappy. And I'm using terrible words, but like, you know, it doesn't need to be, um, here's the other thing in like the fitness and wellness industry. It all gets into this separated illusion of you're an expert and you can name all of the muscles, ligaments, and tendons in their proper scientific kinesiology context. That doesn't help the person who's in pain. What helps is going, you need to turn your head this direction and squeeze your armpit down and move your booty underneath you and do that X amount. Of, and then you go, oh, because the way a body processes cueing 
to get the bones, muscles, ligaments, and tendons to do what they're supposed to do is so different than the clinical science of it and how those things are communicated. So I hope to be a bridge from the clinical science aspect of it while honoring the magic that everybody's a little different and sometimes you gotta play with it, you know, that that's what ends up healing and making it better. We may not always be able to fix things. And that was the other note I took, Mia, it was a great point. Bodies are, like we are, it's a barrage every day. Like we are picking things up, we are wearing the, like I still wear heels, okay? Cause I like them and I know what that does to my pelvis. So I'm gonna do all the work on the mat to take care of my pelvis so that I don't haywire things because of it. But like men, you're moving things around, you are hauling kids in backpacks and you're, you know, it's like, there's a lot of things happening in our bodies every day. They are constantly being pulled out of alignment. So there will always be quirks. There will always be these little sneaky pain things and you'll go try a new hike, Mia, because I know you love to hike and you'll be sore from it. And so then it becomes, well, how do I navigate through that instead of being terrified that it means something's really wrong in my body and not knowing what to do with it. So I think there's this idea of healing that is true. Like Mateo, your back stuff, you know, it's not the same scenario anymore. And Christine, the shoulder stuff gone, you know, and, but there are little things that will constantly pop up and that's normal in a body that moves in the world. And, but knowing how to navigate and work with that is different and very empowering. So I appreciate you saying all of those things because again, different than what others had offered to it, but we're, we all start nodding because we go, yeah, that's, it's the same, but different in everybody. So thank you. Yeah. And Mateo, did you have something you wanted to add? Yeah, I know you have to wrap up, but I just wanted to add to that thought. Um, Marisa, I thought you said it really well up on what you're saying, Tandy, which is um, when you have a really serious injury, and you're right, I wasn't being totally clear about the seriousness of my injury. I couldn't, like you said, Marisa, it was debilitating, and it's terrifying, and it's extremely painful, and it changes everything. And when I started to do MK seriously, it was like instead of having to go somewhere else for someone else to do something to me and solve this great unknown, suddenly I had this tool set that I can use myself and I do the exact same thing. I stand around all day and I say, where are your hips? Where, where, where are your shoulders? Where are you using your core? And when you start to learn that language and use it on yourself, it's incredibly empowering. And that's, that's not having to get it from anybody else. So. That's the only point I wanted to add. And Mia, you wanted to add something to that. Yeah, real quick. I just want to emphasize your cueing is amazing. I've done certain positions or poses time and time again and felt the same way every time, which has felt fine or good. But then the way you cue it, and just add a little thing to it is magical. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a whole new stretch. Like I didn't even know that muscle existed. So it's amazing. And then back to what Mateo is saying, I mean, obviously I am in the kitchen a lot. And so actually oftentimes my wrists will get tired, but then I'll realize when I'm cutting, like mm, squeeze my armpits down and then it's fine. And so it's the funniest thing. It's just like I'll catch myself now and then or when I'm picking something up to really squat or just being more mindful of our day-to-day -day movement rather like back to the bed. I mean, sometimes making the bed used to hurt my back. And if I don't engage my core, that could throw out my lower back. So it's really about being mindful. And then um, I just want to say I popped into a wheel the other day. Congratulations. Yeah. Six times a week. That's amazing. So we'll, we'll take that like, you know, celebration as a, as a way to transition and, and close out 
um, this share and this discussion in this video, wheel becomes, I'll, I'll tell you right now, it becomes this kind of hallmark thing on Matt and Kitchen that people get very intimidated by wheel, you know, and it, it looks fancy and it is, it's very, it's challenging because it's a huge heart opener. It's huge, you know, chest and shoulder mobility in a constructive way and a lot of leg strength and back stuff, right? So a lot of people come to Pilates because they've got back injuries and, you know, if they know enough, that's typically where you go. And so wheel becomes this like, Oh, it's like a graduation moment. It's like this, like, I can do this now. And it's always a sneaky, like, you do need to keep trying and you do need to like, not be able to do it for a while. And then it happens and it's so magical. So that's awesome. And I just wanted to thank everybody for being here. And also say that, you know, the chronic injury, chronic, you know, hurt pieces don't have to be epic. They could be. And if you have those pieces, like the mat is where you need to be. Like that's what, you know, and I, I said it about um, Mia because you did, you really tried to break up with me. It was a very lovely email. And I'd also like to say that like, I just wouldn't let you. Um, and most people will email me, you know, when they're canceling or if they feel like they want to put it on freeze. And I'm like, no, 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 no. When things go wrong, that's when you really need to be here. Like that's where the extra magic and the goodness and the real value of it, I think. I mean, value is different for everybody, what it provides. But it's in those cranky parts, that's where the goods are at. That's the biggest sign from your body that it needs attention to alignment and loosening what's tight and tightening what's loose. That's it. Like we can get fancy and long-winded or just get really simple. Like just get on the mat just press play, be there as often as you can and be as consistent as possible. And Nia brought it up. Like I recommend that people be there four to six times a week because I think that's what's you like, I feel like that's what's approachable and I want it to be approachable. There's no perfect. Aaron said that earlier. Um, you can do it seven times a week. It is totally gentle enough to do that. And you can double up if that works for your body. Absolutely, because it's not about blowing out your body. It's not about pushing past your adrenals and your hormone levels, and it doesn't wear you out. It's about bolstering, nurturing, supporting, strengthening, creating mobility in constructive ways that are in respect to the way your body is built to function. So the, in, some in some cases, you know, that twice a day, seven days a week, I think that would be the most totally appropriate if that works for your body. So I, I just, I think when you have the cranky parts and the worried bits, that's when you need Matt and Kitchen most and to not be scared and to reach out and email Mia and Ryan and um, James I and Aaron, I didn't know any of you all before you were members or before the outreach email from you all. So that, you know, and I think people may watch us and go, oh, they're all friends. And it's like, yet I have met you in person, but, and we are friends now, but just from the exchanges, it is much more personal and real and genuine. And my goal really is for people not to feel at the mercy of their bodies. That's real because I felt completely at the mercy of my body from years and I it's a terrifying feeling like we have a physical body there's we need to learn to respect it and learn how to work with it but it's a beautiful thing that we should enjoy that's capable of so many things and if it's hurt that luster for life is is dampened and that's just not the way it's supposed to be you want to take all the juice out of life you possibly can so Thank you all for being here. Thank you for sharing your stories and your mountain kitchen experiences. And if anybody has watched this and watched the full thing, like take the leap, become a member, like let's heal. Let's solve some cranky bits and get you feeling amazing in your body.